Guilty on all six counts, the trial of Michelle Traconis comes to an end in Stamford. Right now at five, we'll look back at the case, hear reaction from all the major players, and take a look at what's to come. Good evening, I'm Katherine Hauser. I'm Ann Nyberg. Michelle Traconis, about 11 o'clock this morning, was found guilty on all six charges that she faced, including conspiracy to commit murder, two counts of tampering with physical evidence, two counts of conspiracy to commit tampering with physical evidence and hindering prosecution. News 8's Darren Kramer and Eva Zamaris, they have been at the courthouse all day for us following this case for weeks. They join us live in Stanford with what this verdict means. Well, that verdict, as Ann said, came down late this morning, about 11 a.m., guilty on all six counts. It was emotional when it happened. Uh, Eva was in the courtroom when this verdict was read. What a scene it was, right? Yeah, it absolutely was. And everyone quickly ran into the courtroom, and the judge read a note saying that the jury had reached a verdict. The jury was then brought in. Take a listen. Is she guilty or not guilty of the first count of the information charging the defendant with conspiracy to commit murder in violation of Connecticut General Statutes, Section 53A, 48A, and 53A-54A, subsection A. Guilty. Guil Tracona is flanked by her two defense attorneys sunk into her seat, putting her head on the table and sobbing as the clerk went count by count. Guilty, said for each one, the state moved to revoke her bond saying she's a flight risk, but Traconis's defense attorney argued against that. Here's their back and forth inside of court. Under in the alternative, at a minimum, double it and make significant conditions upon her release if she were able to make it. And she has a, a teenage daughter uh, that she is, the, and at least for the time being, remains the primary caregiver for her. She's appeared at all times. Her family all live in the United States. She's an American citizen. The judge ultimately raised bond to $6 million. If she does post that, she'll have to abide by the conditions of her release. That includes house arrest and GPS monitoring. So far today, though, her attorney says she has been unable to come up with that money to post bond, so she will be locked up at York Correctional Institution in Niantic. She will, and this trial has gone on for 32 days. Here's a much closer look at what happened over the course of this trial. trusting these uh, fair trial. And for the record, she was displaying what appears to be the front of the shirt. Uh, Much of this, again, has nothing to do with Michelle Traconis. January 11th, 2024. It's the matter of State of Connecticut versus Michelle Traconis. Michelle Traconis' trial began. She's been charged with conspiracy to commit murder, hindering prosecution, and tampering with evidence. If I knew he was doing something wrong, I would not even walked into that car. It's alleged she conspired with her then-boyfriend, Fotis Dulos, before investigators say he attacked and killed his estranged wife, Jennifer Farber Dulos, on May 24, 2019. But she's denied any knowledge or involvement from the start. The second I called Jennifer, it's like my stomach just sank. During the trial, the state laid out how it turned from a missing persons case to murder investigation. There's some back here too. Through the lens of police. We were able to pick up pictures or video rather of Jennifer Dulos's vehicle leaving in the morning and returning and then leaving for a second time and not returning and through cameras across the state, which captured their movements on the day Jennifer disappeared, including this one from Hartford, showing who appears to be Michelle and Fotis making stops and dumping bags along Albany Avenue. In the event that the trash got picked up, um, got uh, meddled with, I don't know. I wanted to have someone out there as soon as possible. The emotion was palpable inside the courtroom when items from those bags were taken out. Zip ties, ponchos, gloves, razor, and what's believed to be Jennifer's clothing. With respect to the front of the bra, is there a cut going down the middle of it? There is. Forensic experts who specialize in blood, DNA, and fingerprint testing comb through the evidence found in the bags at the Farmington Mansion Fotis and Michelle shared in Jennifer's home and their cars. There's no place in 
New Canaan or in that suburban that has Michelle Traconis' DNA. The jury heard from Traconis herself. Do you know where she is? And can you please tell us or at least lead us in the right direction? Through her interrogation videos, where she's pressed on her whereabouts, what she knows, and the timeline she wrote out. Seven. <laughs> Uh, West Hartford Starbucks. And from those who were working directly with the Dulos family at that time, the children's nanny, Lauren Almeida. We told the police that a mother of five was missing and that she was in a very contentious divorce. And FOTUS' employee, Pavel Gumieni, whose truck investigators say FOTUS took down to New Canaan. He testified FOTUS insisted he get the truck detailed and swap out the seats. He keep on saying, like, you got to do it. You, 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 can you do it? The state's final witness was Farber Dulos's mother, Gloria. Do you have custody of the five children? I do. And since May 24th, uh, 2019, have any of the children ever seen or spoken to their mother? No. The five Dulos children were in the courtroom for her testimony, surrounded by family and friends. The state rest, Your Honor. It was then the defense's turn to call witnesses. The owner of an Avon ski club, a close friend, memory expert, and cognitive scientist all took the stand. Most people think that when you don't use a language, you switch it off. So you switch one on, you use it, you switch it off, and you go back and forth. That's not how the brain works. This scientist provided her opinion about Traconis's ability to understand and speak English as a second language, based on watching her three interviews with the police, reading the transcripts, and a brief interaction with her. The purpose was to allow the jury to at least understand that for all those hours that Michelle Traconis was being interrogated, she had a medium level proficiency, which would at least suggest some level of misunderstanding. Traconis chose not to take the stand and testify. Is that your independent decision? See. And the defense rested its case. At this time, the defense rests. Thank you. Your Honor, at this time, the state is not going to be putting on a rebuttal case. When asked for a comment outside of court, Traconis didn't have anything to say. Michelle, do you want to say anything? No, gracias. Over the course of the trial, more than 200 exhibits were shown to the jury, and dozens of witnesses were called. And Traconis is set to be sentenced on May 31st. Hey, we